Hi everyone, I want to talk about my favorite books today. Favorite books so far. And, you know, I'm not necessarily going to be reviewing them or going very in depth, but I'm just going to be talking about why I like them. The first one is 1984 by George Orwell. You guys probably know what this is about. Um, it's become even more popular recently. And the reason why I think I like this um, is because it's very emotional. It's very impactful, I would say, because of the the way that it handles the things that go on as if it were as if they were just natural for the world that they live in because i think that what makes this book very disturbing is the fact that all of the characters and situations feel very human and so everything just feels like it will really happen in the world that we know the ending line of this book was something that I don't think I was even prepared for when I read it it really it was very strong for me I don't think I had read something that is that this you know something that was kind of a disturbing book or considered a disturbing book until then and so it was very shocking I was I got attached to the characters and I think that's the main reason why I it hurt me to see the ending like that. So yes, very this was very meaningful for me. Uh, when I read it I was in high school I think. Yeah, I was in high school. I hadn't read that much, so this starting off well not starting off but you know, this being one of the first serious books that I read was, I think it was, it made some difference in my, you know, the way that I viewed literature in general. Next one is The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. This book was, well, it's very short. And I remember thinking that it was in some way funny when I read it. Because it seemed to me that, in reality, people didn't turn into insects overnight. Because, you know, this book is about a guy that just literally wakes up one day and he's an insect. And obviously his life isn't the same way anymore. And the way people treat him is different, especially his family. And the way that he fits into society is different. And now I understand that it makes sense to think that this is about disability and how disabled people have to deal with the way they are looked upon in society and how how even people close to them might look at them with disgust and it makes it really tragic in reality it makes this very short book that I thought it was funny, something quite sad, and I think it, you know, in the times that this book came out, it was the Victorian times, I'm not sure if that term could really apply outside of England, but it was, it, you know, th those were times in which disabled people were considered to be embarrassing, and if a family had a, a member who was disabled, they would try to hide them at home or when visits came over they would you know try to make them ignore the ignore the disabled person or you know act as if they didn't exist and i think that's something that is repre i mean that's definitely something that is represented here but i think that it's also something that could be could really be representative of the way that we still look or act towards the disabled. So, the next one is a graphic novel. It's Watchmen. 
So the main reason why I love this so much is because I didn't expect to like the characters as much and it, re it really impressed me how well written they were because I ended up, you know, at the, at the beginning of the book I was kind of annoyed at Rorschach, for example, I was just like, oh, you're so... You know, I thought that he was just some pretentious dude and, you know, when when you realize that he's a hypocrite and there's so many things wrong with him, you start to understand that he's meant to be written that way and you're actually meant to look at him as someone that isn't a role model, you know, someone that isn't cool. And even the other characters, also in the, in the case of Edward Blake, the other characters serve to ground them, to make you understand that they're not, that even in that world, those characters are not considered to be good. They can't be, they can't be accepted just like that, um, which serves, you know, it, it helps the whole, it helps, I guess it helped Alan Moore to pull off the whole asshole character thing. I even ended up crushing on Edward Blake, so that takes some work to do. Well, honestly, I crush on almost every male character that I like, so... But in terms of, you know, in terms of the story, I can't really say much, honestly. I think that it was really cool how... How there were characters introduced that were just everyday people and then you see what happens to them and it makes you feel it more than as if you just looked at them as, oh, you know, they're just some minor character that doesn't matter, which tends to happen in fiction and it makes us care less about what happens to a large group of people that we are not really introduced to. And that was very genius. So, yes, that, that is an amazing book. Next one is 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. This book is... Um, it doesn't really have a plot. It has stories that are... Well, it has different situations that are related to each other and it goes through the story of a family in, you know, throughout many different generations and how they deal with the issue of incest among them and how they how it affects them at the end of it all. The characters are you know very interesting. They're very three-dimensional. The way that this is written is really beautiful. Not flowery, but really beautiful and I like that. It's it's more or less simplistic, but it's it has a lot of humor. The characters say sometimes funny thing. Honestly, the the way that it's written, it it out it itself has some humor, but the characters themselves are pretty funny at times. And I'm saying that because the title may give you the idea that this is like a long and depressing read. You know, one hundred years of solitude, but it's not. It really is entertaining to read this. I think not maybe not from the very start. Because it's a bit slow on the start, it's not very... It's not very magical realist from the start. But then things start to get very interesting and very funny actually. And obviously tragic at times. So this is... And I definitely recommend this. I think you should definitely read this. I read this in Spanish but some people say that the translation, the English translation, is just as good, if not better. Um, I don't know. And then this last one is Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. I think I would consider this to be my favorite book so far. It's... it has... you know, the writing is very strong at some parts and a bit slower or weaker in others especially the prologue and the first chapter of this book are particularly surrealist well the second chapter has a bit of, of that as well but 
those two parts are just really strong because the writing is really blunt so everything that happens is just given to you like this and it's you know at some parts it's very shocking to read the things that are going on just as they are going on the author isn't using many many ways to conceal what is happening because it's almost like he wants to be honest or you know blunt enough to to show how horrible things really are now i think that the rest of the book after those two chapters is really great the whole book is it just goes through a lot of things right you can tell that the author is trying to put a lot of things into one place but i think he really pulls it off because it ends up being part of a bigger picture very well and you know the parts that i that i would say are weaker about this are some of the speeches just go on for really long for no particular reason like they're just repeating themselves and i mean i wouldn't say i think that maybe some people would get annoyed at the philosophical rants that the author goes through well the, the narrator goes through but i thought those were enjoyable and pretty interesting it's especially ones from the prologue or you know the first the first half or so of the novel but all of it is great and there were many parts of this book that have a lot of symbolism i think that's how you would describe it where you know he's saying something he's trying to give some commentary some social commentary by talking about something that is objectively happening to the character like one of the first you know during the battle royal part part um there's this white woman and you know i'm saying this because obviously i it was one of the first times where there was a white woman so i was like you know i knew that I, that's how I fit into the narrative of the book, I guess. But there was this white woman that was a stripper. She was naked and she was going on... She was going on the ring or, you know, the place where they were about to fight. And, you know, all the black men before they were blindfolded. And the narrator mentioned how... Some of the white men, or at least it was implied that they were the white ones, were threatening to do something, some sort of aggression, if he, if they didn't look at her, and then some threatened if he, if they did look at her. That was one of the more blatant ones, but you could, you know, you could tell that it was about how white women were supposed to you know be admired or desired by black men but they weren't supposed to actually have them or you know there was this it was kind of a paradox of you should want me but you shouldn't but i'm supposed to but i'm supposed to act like you didn't like you don't want me or something like that i'm not an expert on racism Okay, what I meant was, maybe it was about how white women were supposed to act like they didn't want black men to want them, but black men were actually supposed to want them anyway, or, you know, that, was, that it was also the way white men felt about the relationship between white women and black men. But, you know, that's something that kind of you could get out of this book if you thought about it i guess so yes i think i have pretty much talked about this book for the most out of all of these but i definitely recommend this just as the other ones 
this, at least read the prologue in the first chapter, like I said, those are excellent, just really admirable pieces of writing. And yes, if you have read any of these, or you have some opinions about any of these, you should definitely tell me, because I would love to hear it. So, yeah, that's basically everything, and I hope you enjoy this video and that you have a great day. Thanks for watching.